This video is part of a series of short videos taking a look at the Boris Continuum 3D Objects category of filters, and specifically this video is going to look at the Deformers feature. So here I'm going to start with, I have a basic extruded text effect. And you'll see down at the bottom of the filter controls are my deformers. So I have bend, taper, twist, curl, shatter, ripple, and pulse. So I've enabled bend, taper, twist. And if I increase the strength parameter, you see how that is bending the 3D text. And I'll give it a little spin around in 3D so you can see that is a true 3D deformation being applied to the extruded text. And twist a little bit on the left and right. Basically, I'm just going to go through these deformers in this video to quickly give an idea of what each of the deformers does. So, Bend Taper Twist does as you would expect from its name. And here I'm going to turn off the bend part, and if I move the center offset, you see you can generate a kind of a nice corkscrew effect there using the twist. And go on to the next deformer is the curl. I'll enable that. And it's actually a two-way curl, as you'll see in a second. You see angle one there, I've given it some curl. Tumble that back in 3D so we can get a better look. And now angle two. Actually, I want that to go the opposite way. And you see this amount slider down below. Here, let me fix this first. This amount slider enables you to simply animate the whole effect on and off. So there, we reduce the tightness of the curl there. And again, so that would be kind of a nice transition bringing the 3D text on on screen that way. Actually, let me tumble it back down. So some of these deformers like curl and shatter are useful for bringing the text on or off the screen. So that's curl. And I'll enable shatter. By default it just auto animates, it shatters the object. And I'm going to enable a, a wipe so it's going to shatter progressively. Let's see if I scrub through the effect here and turn down this crackability, which will give me larger pieces that it shatters. There's all kinds of options for how that looks. Velocity mode, blowing it out from the center, increase explosive force a little bit. You have a really a lot of control over how to customize the look of these deformers, particularly this shatter. You see it's a real 3D shatter effect we have here. And I can, with a single click, make the wipe in the other direction. Even do top to bottom, bottom to top, all kinds of options. Um, and the, having the auto animation is very convenient as well. So that's a quick look at Shatter. I'll disable that and enable the ripple. By default, you see that it's rippling from the center and it's another deformer with auto animation which can be disabled if desired. So I'm going to offset the, um, the ripple center so it's kind of more of a wave and I'll reduce the amplitude a little bit there and the frequency, make it sort of a more subtle wave type of effect. And I'll enable the shatter just to show you can actually have multiple deformers, of course, enabled at once. You can use them together. I'll even enable the curl there and increase the curl amount. Now we have three deformers going there. Let me just tumble it back so we can get a better look at how, what's going on there. So I have my curl, my ripple, and my shatter all affecting 
the extrusion. Disable the shatter and the curl for now. Straighten this out here. And if I disable this ripple, the last deformer is one called Pulse. And you see that does sort of a pulsing um, deformation. And you can choose which kind of deformation. Here, reduce the radius. You see I can offset it in Y, offset it in X. And there's lots of interesting options in this deformer as well. Maybe I'll just end it with... I'll make my O open up like a big mouth there for the word deformer. And that's a quick look at the deformer features in BCC 3D objects.